over a Gohan, right? But here's <laughs> it, it's one of the most simple. T it's one of the most simple takedowns in the sport. Yet it's one of the most. Uh, I don't know. People screw it up a lot. All right. And when I say screw it up, they leave too much to chance. Okay. So a couple things have to happen, right? If first of all you stop your opponent's shot, go ahead by down blocking with your head. Good for you. That's awesome. Stopping stopping a shot is one thing, but scoring off of his attack is certainly another. So as you as you down block, at least give yourself a little bit of an angle as you do it. So instead of stepping directly backwards, always start stepping to the side. Now, here's what I was talking about when I say people kind of go and do it a little bit. I don't want to say wrong, but they 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 give their opponent an out. Okay. So what happens is. As you start to down block that shot, slowly freeze, okay? They get excited for the takedown, and they just kind of think of Johnny Hendricks in the, in the national finals, and if you get underneath both armpits, you're supposed to have two points. The problem is that I have zero control of his hips, right? So as soon as I get to here, and I feel he feels like he's in danger, he's gone. We saw it at Fargo. Um, you know, I'll show you a clip. I can't think of the kids' names, but you know, pretty high-level wrestlers that just kind of let their opponent off the hook. Okay, they could have put a nail in a coffin at that point. So, what what we should be doing there, okay, is keep a keeping good body position, but b also controlling his hips. So as we down block, freeze. Okay, I'm not just going up here, and that kind of locks my legs out and keeps my hips up. I'm dropping my hips on him. And then I'm grabbing his hamstring. So as he starts to circle out, I'm okay. I can still change this to a leg attack, right? So as he circles out, I still have control of his hips. If you are absolutely that guy that wants to go to the hip on a go behind, you can, but don't go to the armpits, all right? So if you can keep your opponent down, which is hard enough to do, right? Uh, let's turn 90 degrees this way. Good, perfect, okay? Which is hard enough to do. If you want to just go fingertips right on the hip bone and drop your elbow and start pulling, go ahead. But I'm telling you, you're going to give yourself a lot more options and you're going to shut off a lot of his options, okay? Get into that hamstring. Now, that's kind of part one. But what you're going to see, it's a, it just happens to be a good example of it, is mobility and flexibility in the hip joint, okay? It's something that we, we probably don't really think about all that often. But if you look at a guy that takes a shot, okay, and I down block, and maybe he gets underneath my head, right? As I start to go behind him, he can grab my legs, right? So that's not ideal, obviously, right? So what you'll say to, okay, what you'll see is a lot of guys will start to pick their legs up and almost jump to this go behind here, right? And now, if he catches my legs, I'm in trouble, right? Here, I'm in a lot of trouble. So what has to happen is my knees need to go behind my hips, right? So if you kind of look at it over here, come over here, please. <coughs> uh, I'm gonna let him come out the back door a little bit. Go ahead, come out the back door. Good, freeze right there. Now, once I'm here, if you look, my knee is in front of my hip. Now, all I'm gonna do is ex extend it to here, and now he can't grab a leg. So it, it, there's more flex in my hips than there is in his shoulders. So he's kind of reaching back like this. And even if he does get a hand on it, it doesn't really help because there's not much of grabbing my legs. Right, so when we do take that big jump to go behind, our hips have to kind of go out, and our knees go back behind our hips. 